extremely important. The first is Young's double slit experiment and the second one is diffraction. So we will quickly, we will do a very, very quick revision of interference, Young's double slit experiment and diffraction. So let's get started. So we have learned that uh, interference is basically formation of maximum and minimum intensities by superposition of two identical light waves traveling in same direction. So basically what happens is when you have two such waves overlap, like you have two different waves but they are moving along the same direction and when they overlap, then the resultant wave's intensity is not uniform. So it is something like this, you have one wave you have one more wave and when these two overlap, they form another wave. So basically the resultant wave has a non-uniform intensity. That means in the resultant wave, you basically see alternate dark and light, dark and bright fringes. So it's like, it's not just one uniform thing that you see. It's like one dark band, one bright band. Again, one dark band, one bright band. So something like this, a pattern of alternate dark and bright bands like this is seen on the screen. So in fact, the Young's double slit experiment is all about that. So it actually shows us this alternate bright and dark bands pattern on the screen. Okay, now when we talk about interference, there are two types of interference that is constructive interference and destructive interference. Constructive, so when we are building something, so what do we mean by that? So when two waves are in the same phase, then the intensity of the resultant wave is maximum. Something like this, where you see that these are two waves. So let, let's say this is wave number one and this is wave number two. And when these two waves, they join together or they combine, what happens? Then we see that the intensity of the resultant wave is more than that of one of these waves. And why did that happen? That happened because both the waves 1 and 2, they are in the same phase. So it is something like this. Let's say that uh, you are applying force. Let, let's say that there is a heavy box lying here. Okay. So this is really, really heavy. And now let's say that you are standing here. This is you. And you are trying to push this box. You want to shift the box to some other place. So you are applying a force in this direction. But you are still not able to move the box. Now let's say that your friend comes and he also joins you and he is also pushing the box in the same direction. Now what happens? So now it is your force plus the force applied by your friend and as a result the box might move. That's because the resultant force now is more. So exactly a similar thing is happening here when both the waves are in the same phase, they add up together and as a result the resultant wave has a greater intensity. Whereas when we talk about destructive interference, just the opposite thing happens. That means when you have two waves, one and two, which are in opposite phase, what happens? They kind of cancel out each other. So in this case, they are like exactly opposite phase. So what do you get? So in the resultant wave, the intensity is zero, right? So in constructive interference, we see that the intensity of the resultant wave is maximum. So in this case, this resultant wave has maximum intensity. So here, if this has maximum intensity, whereas in case of destructive interference, this has, the resultant wave has minimum intensity, right? So, it, it, so the destructive interference can be thought of like this. So you have the same heavy box lying here. You are standing here and you are trying to apply a force in this direction. Suddenly your friend comes and he comes on the other side and he starts pushing it in this direction. So what would happen? The box would, no, would not move at all because now both of you are applying force in the opposite direction. And as a result, the net force acting on the box would be zero. So the box would not move. Okay, so now there are a couple of conditions or criteria that must be met for interference to take place. Now, interference doesn't take place all the time. So there are certain criteria for interference to take place. And the first criteria is the sources of waves must be coherent because from where do we get these waves? Like we are saying that, you know, two waves, one and two, they come and they superpose and they form a resultant wave. But from where do we get the waves one and two? So they come from some source of light or if we are really talking about light wave. Now these sources of waves must be coherent. Now what do we mean by coherent? So that's interesting. So coherent 
means that these two waves should always have a constant phase difference between them so that is what we that is when we say that the sources are coherent so basically the two waves must always have a constant phase difference between them now what is the next criteria the waves must have same frequency or same wavelength because wavelength and frequency are very closely related right so we we all know that frequency which is nu is equal to c by lambda right so if your frequency is same then eventually your wavelength would also be same so the wavelength or frequency of both these waves should be the same okay and what's the third criteria waves must have approximately equal amplitudes and this is important why because if what if the waves do not have equal amplitudes now if the waves do not have equal amplitudes in that case we will actually not see the contrast between the bright and dark fringes on the screen because even if they do not have uh, approximately equal amplitudes interference might take place because if the sources are coherent and if they have the same frequency the interference might take place but it will take place very lightly in the sense that you will not be like as i said that normally what happens in interference what you see on the screen you see alternate dark and bright bands like this so you have one dark band followed by one bright band again one dark band again one bright band and so on so in order to see this contrast clearly the dark has to be really dark and the bright has to be really bright only then you will be able to see the alternate bands distinctly but when the waves do not have equal amplitudes or like if their amplitudes are totally different in that case the pattern that you see on the screen there you do not see the contrast between the bright and the dark fringes so therefore it is important that the amplitudes are equal and now even if it is not exactly equal it they should be approximately equal and in an ideal scenario if the amplitudes are exactly equal that is when let's say a1 and a2 they are the amplitudes of the two waves 1 and 2 when amplitudes are exactly equal in that case the minimum intensity is exactly zero so you got my point so minimum intensity basically corresponds to the dark bands dark bands right so when the minimum intensity is exactly zero means that band is completely dark but when a a1 and a2 are not exactly equal but approximately equal in that case the value of i minimum is not exactly zero but it is close to zero so your dark band is uh, close to dark it is not exactly dark or it is not completely dark right so so these are the three conditions which must be met for interference to take place okay now what happens during interference that is what happens to the resultant intensity of the wave during interference so normally how do we find out the intensity of the resultant wave now as i was talking just now that let's say that you have one wave like this you have another wave coming like this let let's call so let's say that this wave is coming from some source s1 this wave is coming from some source s2 and let's say that the intensity of this wave is i1 intensity of this wave is i2 now when these two superimpose they form the resultant wave now let's say that the intensity of the resultant wave is i so how do we find out the value of the intensity of the resultant wave so the intensity is given by this expression that is i1 plus i2 plus 2 root over i1 i2 cos phi now you might have a question in mind what is this phi so this phi is nothing but the constant phase angle by which the second wave leads the first wave or we can say it is the constant phase difference between the two waves so you remember i said that one of the conditions for interference to take place is that the two waves must have a constant phase difference between them so that constant phase difference is basically phi so this is how we find out the intensity of the resultant wave now for all of you who are interested in the derivation of this expression that how did we get this expression why intensity is not equal to the sum of the intensities of the two waves that's because 
we just can't add them like that that's because there is a phase difference also between them so we need to take into account that phase difference as well so in case you are interested in the derivation then please make sure that you watch the video on wave optics of physics class 12th in exam fear education so we have already uploaded the video on wave optics of class 12th so this is like a quick recap because here in the neat series we want to focus more on the questions okay so now going further, let's talk about the resultant intensity of the resultant wave in case of constructive interference because whenever we talk about constructive interference, we are basically talking about the maximum intensity. That means whenever constructive interference takes place, the intensity of the resultant wave is maximum and as a result, we see the bright band on the screen because in interference, the output that we see is uh, a series of alternate dark and bright bands. So when we talk about constructive interference, we are basically talking about the bright bands that we see on the screen. So what would be the maximum intensity? So for so under which situation will you get uh, maximum value of i here? So when the value of cos phi is equal to 1. Right, because when cos phi is equal to 1, in that case, the overall value of this expression would be maximum. So the va expression's value would be i1 plus i2 plus 2 root over i1 plus i2. So this can be written as i1 root over i1 plus root over i2 whole square, right? Because a, a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab. So from with that, we can say that the maximum intensity would be root over i1 plus root over i2 whole square. Now, what does this tell us? This tells that for constructive interference, cos phi should be 1. That means the value of phi should be equal to 0 because cos 0 is equal to 1. That means the phase difference between the two waves should be 0 degree. That means the two waves must be in phase. That's what we learned, right? Constructive interference takes place when the two waves are in phase. Cool. Now let's move on to the next type of interference that is destructive interference. So in case of destructive interference, the value of intensity should be minimum. Now again, looking at this expression, the value of intensity will be minimum when the value of cos phi is also minimum. And what could be the minimum value of cos phi? Cos phi could be minus 1. And when is cos phi minus 1? When phi is equal to 180 degree. That basically means when the two waves are out of phase. That means if one wave is like this, the other wave has to be like this. Only then they are out of phase. Right? So in that case, what happens? The value becomes I1 plus I2 minus 2 root over I1 I2. That is root over I1 minus root over I2 whole square. So that is how we find out the minimum value of intensity. Right, so with this, I also uh, kind of proved the same fact that whenever the two waves are in phase, they combine together such that